So I recently put out a video called Recipe for Disaster where I had to make a cupcake without using any recipe whatsoever. And we filmed it with two different cameras, the Blackmagic Pocket 4K and the Panasonic GH5. With that, I had to sync both of the cameras up so that they would actually match each other in terms of timing so I could cut between one and the other and also help me speed up the workflow of trying to switch between the two angles in a very efficient way. So the first thing that you want to do is actually bring in your raw clips into your bin down here. I have two different angles. So I have the footage from the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. I have footage from the GH5 here. And you want to bring the PUD videos in to this area. And what I've done here is I've just actually put it into folders so that I have A, B, and C, which is just the order in which I was shooting it in. So if I go here, we have A, B, and C. So you can see here, I've already like put something together just for demonstration purposes, but I'm actually gonna show you how to do this here. I'm gonna select both clips, right click, and go all the way to the top and choose create new multicam clip using selected clips. I'm gonna name it multi clip B and I'm gonna use angle sync on sound. It will sync both of the video clips based on the sound, uh, like the sound waves, rather than trying to find an endpoint or a time code which you might have a camera that has that and you can gen lock them together, but most likely not. And so the way that I do that is I actually have a clapperboard like this. And what I would do is when I roll both cameras, I would take the clapperboard and then I will do that. And what it does is it creates a really sharp spike in the audio wave and the software is looking for that and it will sync them up together. So that way both clips will be synced up and we'll play so if you switch between different angles, it's in real time together. You don't have to manually line them up and slide them and cut them and all that stuff. Once you've done this, click Create. And what it'll do is it'll analyze the content, finding those two waypoints that it can line up. It shouldn't take too long. These clips are just a little bit longer. I think they're like maybe 30, 40 minutes. But if you have really short clips, it shouldn't take too long. Once this is complete, you will now have a multi-clip and a folder with original clips unless you uncheck that. That just puts these two together here and you can still access them, but you have the multi-clip here. The way that Resolve is treating this is kind of like a compound clip or a nested clip so that this is, the multi-clip is essentially a nested or compound clip of the two original that are stacked on top of each other. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. But this now contains both. And you can see this in the bottom left hand corner that it has these little squares and that indicates that it's a multi-cam clip. So you don't have to make any special timeline to use a multi-cam clip. You can just use a regular one and then just drop those clips on the actual timeline. If I double click on this, so it shows me both angles of the clip. If you have more cameras, it will show you more. But if you look at this, Oh my God, they're like so sticky. So you can see that the clips are both synced up and I didn't have to do anything else other than use that angle sync with sound. That may differ depending on your own situation, but if you have good enough microphones plugged in to all of the cameras that can pick up a clean signal that can easily identify waveforms and it can actually match them together, you shouldn't have any problem with this or if you do have cameras with time code, definitely use them as well. But this is a really good backup choice for that. Also on a note of syncing, make sure both cameras are filming at the same frame rate, otherwise this won't work. Because if you have a 24 FPS and a 30 FPS, then you're gonna run into problems because it's either gonna be frame dropping and that could cause problems with the waveforms trying to sync. So make sure all your cameras are at the same frame rate. What I can do now is you can see that these actually look a lot more similar in color. And that's because I pre-graded the GH5 footage to match a little bit closer 
to the black magic footage. And the way that I did that, because if you apply a grade here, if you go into the color tab and try to apply a color grade, it's gonna apply it to the multi clip, which has both of the files in there, which is really good when you've already balanced them and they match and you wanna add some creative touches to that. But it's not really good when the cameras don't really match up very well. You do still need to balance them as close as you can first and then grade them together. That just, it might take a little bit more time and feel like it's more work, but it'll give you significantly better results. So what I can do is in the timeline of the, where the multi-clip is, with it selected, if I right click and go open in timeline, you can see that it treats it the same way as a compound clip or a nested clip. And if I do this, you can see both of the clips here. So there is angle A and there's angle B. With the GH5 footage selected, which is on top, if I go to the color tab now, you can see that I actually did some color work here. And I didn't do anything too crazy. All I was trying to do is get it relatively close to the, the black magic footage. So if I turn this off, you can see the original. And all I did was I added a bit of brightness, added a little bit of saturation here, as well as some contrast, just taking out a little bit of the color here as well. It's very, very subtle, but just taking out a little bit of red you can kind of see that in the skin tones here. And then I'm using, I think I'm using a layer, not a parallel. Yeah, it's not doing much, but you can see in the skin tones here, getting rid of a lot of that like pinky magenta red that seems to happen with the GH5. Some Canons do this as well. And that just kind of warms everything up. So adding a little bit of warmth, this is using a selection here, where I'm just selecting like the warmer redder tones and kind of taking them out a little bit and adding a little bit of warmth and a little bit of green because that's kind of the look of the pocket camera that it has. I haven't really white balanced any of them yet, but I wanted to just get them close so that when I do that, I can do all of my work on the compound clip and they'll be relatively close. So if I turn off that, I'm just pressing shift H because I have a selection on this. So that will only show me the selection. It's the same thing as this. And yeah, it just takes a little bit of that red out and warms up the skin and the table. And if I go back here and go back to my timeline, just double click that and double click this, they just look a little closer. They don't, you know, they'll never be perfect, but they'll cut a little nicer together. So you can see here, like you can see the white areas or the cream areas on the apron, they're kind of a little bit closer. It's not perfect, there's a little bit more like warmth on this one but it's close enough where it's not distracting. Now that we have a multi-clip, we have a couple of choices of ways that we can actually edit this. And one of the easiest ways is if we go into this area here, there's a button at the bottom. If we click this, we can change from source to multicam. Now you wanna do this because what this allows you to do is actually click on which angle you wanna switch back and forth to while the timeline is playing. And at the bottom of this window, you have three options. You can choose to change the angle of just the video. You can choose to change the angle of both the video and the audio. So if you have two microphones, or you can change the angle of just the audio. So if you wanna keep the video the same, but let's say I have a microphone, I have it here pointed down, but let's say I go over here to the oven and I'm out of you know range where it doesn't pick it up very well, I could switch to the little Rode microphone and it would pick me up better and just kind of blend between the two. It makes it nice and easy so that I have a little bit more range without dropping the quality of the video. So an easy way to do this is if I'm just playing and I want to change angle, I can just click and then click back. And click back. Click. And then, so what that's doing on the timeline is it's putting a bunch of cuts down here only on the video track. So that is just now letting me switch between the different cameras that I need to, not changing the audio source, but just the video. You can actually do it down here as well if you wanted to. If you actually right click on the audio, you can choose to switch the angle of the audio. So if I switch to this. Oh, these look gorgeous. So now you're hearing the sound from the Rode mic. No, they don't. They look 
So if I click this back and just play that a little bit again. Oh, these look gorgeous. The benefit of this as well is you can actually then, if you don't like this angle, let's say this one where I'm, I clicked and it was there's nothing there. And it's like, well, this isn't a good angle. I can select this. I can do angle one and that's it. It switches back to it. It's not a big deal. So I can actually go back in and if I'm not super happy with it, I can change the angle back if I need to. Another good thing about it is that when it does this, you can actually then remove parts of the clips and do like J cuts and L cuts where the footage and the audio kind of don't line perfectly up. So you can change angle and have audio running over and do some very creative editing things. Well, what I did first was I would actually go through and create my regular cuts. I'd go through with the blade tool because when you do this, it actually like unlinks the audio. You can see that it's only linked to this first clip and these are no longer linked and there's no blade cut. So if I want to start like cutting stuff, it's not really going to work if I want to take, you know, if I want to take this whole segment out and I do this, it's not taking the audio with it. It's not removing it. Or if I, you know, delete it, everything now is out of sync. So there is some little idiosyncrasies with it. So the way that I dealt with this was before I did all my angle choices, I actually went through and did multiple passes of the video. And I went through and I would actually, with the blade tool, cut out the sections that I don't want to keep. Uh, I'm hitting backspace to leave the gap. And that way I knew where I'd cut stuff. But if I wanted to, I can select them. And if you want to save a little bit of time, I would press delete and that would actually close the gap. If you did do this method where you delete it with the backspace, if you use backspace and like remove the clip, but you keep the gap. If you go up to edit and come down here, you can actually just choose to delete gaps. So if you do that after the fact, I just found it was a lot easier to manage things and just delete the gaps after rather than go in individually and have to click and delete and so on and so forth. It was just a lot more efficient for me to do it that way. It might seem like I did a lot more work by doing multiple passes, but it's a lot less destructive because then what I could do is because I had multiple takes from each camera, what I could do is I could actually just get all of those clips, group them together and then edit them in the same way as this multi-clip where I could compound them together, right click, open in timeline and just work on them this way. And it added a little bit of problem here and there where when you get back, if you do it this way and you start cutting stuff out in here, the compound clip will still be the same length and it will just have dead space and a black screen at the end, which you, you could just trim that out. That's fine. That's all I did. I just found it was a lot more easier to do and more organized than having multiple timelines and so on and so forth. So yeah, and then the last thing I would recommend that you do is go and actually grade it. And the benefit of doing a compound clip at the end once you've done all your edits and group them together is if we go here in the color page, we have four clips because it's every edit that we did on the video. But if you then compound them, let's just leave that as it is, that will flatten it down. It doesn't flatten it down to the point where you can't edit stuff, but it removes it from being a multi-clip. This is just a flat image now, but you can see it has all my edits still baked and do my creative look, if you will. So if I Alt S, if I want to add a LUT, for example, I can, and I'll just go to film work and I'll just go to Kodak Rig 709 D60. And it's a little strong right now. You don't have to use a LUT at all. If I you know, disable that, then I add this here and I add a little bit of you know, add more contrast, add a little bit of saturation, not too much because it'll go a little too crazy. It applies it in a very similar linear way to everything. Obviously the footage is a little bit, you know, compressed because I didn't use the highest quality because I filmed for like four hours. So I <laughs> had to film in a lower bit rate. So you get color noise, but you could always denoise that a little bit and it's not a big deal. But yeah, once you've done that, you can just export it as you normally would go to the deliver page and put it out and put it on whatever website that you want to do. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully you found it useful. I would love to make more of these and try and make more content that teaches you the methodology of how I make my videos and how I shoot them and edit them. 
uh, gear I use and whatnot. So yeah, thank you very much, and I'll uh, see you in the next one.